Hello, folks. I've been working on a project. Uh, there was a question posed about dealing with collecting attendance for student attendance with a Google Form. And this led me to think of a way to collect attendance really simply. Let's take a look at how we would do this. I have a form. It's a simple form. All it has is the student's name. In a drop down, this could easily just be a multiple choice. So if I want to go and choose student six and submit, let's take a look at what that's done with my sheet. August 1st, we have the student six. As, um, Perhaps you have this set up uh, with a Chromebook and the, when the student walks into the room and every student just simply um, comes in, submit another response, find their student name, submit. So it doesn't take the students any time. And what we're collecting now is these attendance reports or this attendance based on a timestamp. Now let's see how we can adjust that to make it work with the um, being able to identify absent and present. So the way I've set this up is I've set this part up here. This is actually a drop down calendar. And if I went back to July 1st, what this does is adjusts the month of July. Now, the way I've set this up, this is a custom date and time where I'm just looking at the month written as a word, but it's, it's actually a, a date field. And then in this case, the um, this date here, uh, for some reason that went and changed on me, I'll paint format. This is the beginning date, and this is a formula that gives me the end date for what I see here. So now I have a date range of 7 1 to 7 31. What I've done here is built an array formula. Uh, and I've recently just did a, a video on this to give me just the days in a month that are actual days that you might be in school. So I'm <clears throat> making a list of holidays here. And if you take a look at how this formula works, you could look at my previous video. It talks about how to create this. This is giving me notice July 4th is skipped because it's in my holiday list and Saturdays and Sundays are skipped. So this lets me choose. In this case, I'll go to August 1st. Um, again, if we switch back here and choose a different day, we go back to July 1st, and this changes to July 1st, and it shows me my attendance for July. I then can switch to August. I would see my attendance for August. I would simply click here and see my attendance for September, which, of course, I don't have any in, in, this, in this project. So let's go back to my August. Now notice I had just submitted the form. Student 6 and Student 8 are now showing as present because they're on this list. So let's see um, how this works. First of all, we've just gone over um, the how to switch months. And that automatically chooses this date. That date is chosen with the end of month formula. This is just giving me the total number of days in a month that we would have for attendance. And then finally, this is a list of holidays that is used by this formula. This is an array formula, so it builds this list for me just based on these two dates. And this A5A that we have in here is how we are double checking and getting rid of holidays. Now let's move on to this next section. This is the formula that lets me calculate whether it's present or absent based on this timestamp. Now, I recently did another video on how dates are stored in Google Sheets, and that's important here. Let's look at this. I'm going to uh, zoom in a little bit here, and let's take a look at this formula. So first of all, it's an array formula. It's going to repeat across this range. And we're saying if len C2C, what that means is we're not going to have it go ahead and calculate anything other than any place that we have any values in C. Otherwise, it would fill out this whole sheet with a lot of A's. So we're just saying, OK, if, if len C2C, and what that does is basically say, if, um, if there's something in here, do this. And the this is, if is a number, match. So what we're doing is we're matching the attendance E1 to T1. So we're taking this, E1 to T1. We're grabbing these. And in this case, this by row C2C, what we're doing with this is actually converting the timestamp, which is a date and time. And we're just getting the value of the the, the five um, the five digits that would be the date, and we're leaving out anything else that is the uh, we're leaving out the values of the decimal places. Which, when you look at the video on storing time, um, let me let me just real quickly show you that just so we can see that here. If we are storing time. I have this data over here. So we can see that time is stored as a value. If there is a time stamp with a date and a time, it's stored as a number and a decimal. And what we're doing is getting rid of that because in this formula here, it's super important that this, we're, we're concatenating the attendance, student one, two, three, four, five, along with the value of this date. And then we are um, also grabbing data, B2B, C2C. Let's look at that. So the data B2C is student name and the timestamp. And so what we're doing is grabbing that data, uh, and we are making sure that the value, not, not the uh, 
not the way you see this printed here, but that value, that numeric value, uh, and, and we've gotten rid of the decimal places. If it's a number, this match, in other words, match produces a number, and if it is a number, that means that it's found a match, and the match is concatenating this, concatenating this, so that's my two values for match. And then if it's a number, we have a P for present, otherwise A for absent. So let's take a look at adding another, let's see, we have uh, the today's date, let's add student nine. So student nine comes in, chooses their name, submits, and we can see that student nine is now present in this formula. So to clarify this formula, when we are concatenating this part of the formula here, it's actually B and C. And we're coming up with, if we look at that, that's student 01445503. That's what that generates. And if we look at this part here, um, this by row lambda, I think maybe that will give us, uh, that's not going to give us a pop-up value, but that value is basically the same thing. So if we, if we do that, um, and I hit the wrong thing there, um, I need to point out that what the, the column we're using for this numeric value here, this B and C, we're concatenating the student name with the adjusted time. Now the adjusted time is an array formula, again, looking at these dates and times, and then just grabbing the left value A to A5. So what we're saying is just get me the five digits. So if, in this case, if we, if we um, looked at this as just the value of this, let's go ahead and show that. The value of this, of A2, is that. And what we needed is this. Because when I'm looking at this formula, the value that we're getting out of this, um, we're getting the value of this. Each row, this is a by row lambda, so we're getting the value of this. And that value does not contain a decimal. So we had to be able to match this, the value of this with this value so that we can get a match and our formula then works for our present and absent. So it's a, it's a little bit complex. But now, as we submit data, we can take a look here. We will add another student for today. Let's say, uh, I don't think student three has submitted yet. Come back here and take a look. Now we have student three for, um, we have student three for August 1st, and I don't think we have that. We can come to our attendance and see, yes, student three shows as present. I've gone ahead and added in percentages. Let's take a look at that formula. What we're doing here is doing a count if E3 to T3 is a P divided by, so the number of P's divided by the number of, uh, of basically students. So this is showing me a 37% average for this day. This is showing me the average per student. Same thing if AE3 to E is a P divided by the total number of days that we have here gives me that percentage. So if I were to go ahead and change one of the days, say for instance, um, let's come back to data and I'll just add something in here. Let me grab student three, for instance. Um, let's go ahead and grab student three. We'll go ahead and copy that down. And we have a, a date there, that's what we need. But this is August 2nd. Let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and have this be August 2nd for this student three, and this be August 2nd for, or August, uh, August 1st for student three, and August 2nd for student three. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's take a look at our attendance sheet, and we can see that student three now has 8.7% because we've added a day in there. So again, we can uh, uh, add this functionality to the sheet. We can do averages. And now this is all based off of a simple form that the student is filling out, collecting the data here, and having to do some fancy things with some formulas in order to be able to calculate attendance based off of a simple form.